Hey everyone and welcome to the Loving and Lasting Show. I'm your host Andy Lyons, Chief Fashion Curator for BringBackDesire.com where I share everything you need to get out of your head and back into bed. I'm also host of the Loving and Lasting Show over on Blog Talk Radio every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon Eastern. You can hear me sharing all sorts of goodies to keep you tuned in and turned on. But here, every Wednesday at 12 noon, it is really my sincere pleasure to bring you the best love experts sharing their best tips, tools, and resources to help you have a more fully love and sexually satisfying life. And for me, it's all about helping all you viewers deepen the love, deepen the intimacy, and deepen the erotic connection with your beloved self and your beloved partner. Now today, I've got a phenomenal guest for you. Let's wave hi to Dr. Jamie. Hi, Dr. Jamie. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's so great to have, to have Dr. Dr. Love is what she's known forever around the world. And I'd love to share with you her background. I'm going to be reading it because Lord knows, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to memorize all this. But she is such a phenomenal love expert. And she's known to millions as Dr. Love through her website, AskDrLove.com. You've got to go to this website. Dr. Jamie is the first and immensely popular relationship advice person since 1996. That's how long she's been on the internet doing this wonderful work. She's been delighting readers and audiences for three decades and her engaging blend of professional expertise, spicy humor, and trust me, she's so funny, and ability to turn clinical psychobabble into easy to understand concepts that transforms lives and heal relationships. Her methods have been featured on all the national networks, including CNN, NBC, CBS, VH1, Fox, everywhere. WebMD, iVillage, Discovery, Cosmo, Men's Health. I mean, Dr. Jamie, she's beloved everywhere she goes. On this episode of the Loving and Lasting Show, Dr. Jamie is going to be talking about her most recent book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. And we all need her 10 simple steps to cooling conflict and rekindling our relationships. For our, especially for our intimate relationships because as Dr. Jamie will share with you, unresolved anger is the number one killer of love. And that is something that can be fixed and prevented in relationships. So I'm so excited to have you on board today, Dr. Jamie. Welcome. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to first share with listeners about you that I didn't say? Where are you hailing from today? Where am I hailing from? Well, luckily I don't have hail today. I can say that I'm, <laughs> I'm in Millbrook, you know, Dutchess County, New York. Oh, it's wonderful. You know, everybody watching, here's what I love, love, love about Dr. Jamie or Dr. Love, as she's referred to. It is her deep commitment to helping couples and really folks around the world have a fully expressed and harmonious love-filled life on every level. So I'm so thrilled to have her on today. Dr. Jamie, we're going to be talking a lot about your book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. What compelled you to write this book? Well, you know, they say that shrinks become shrinks because they're raised in utterly dysfunctional families. And it is a fact that my parents, uh, the only religion they practiced was religiously hating each other. <laughs> So I swear I had earned a Ph.D. while I was still in diapers, and I guess I should spell that P-E-E-H-D, right? <laughs> a Ph.D. in conflict resolution, but the real reason, in addition to having crazy parents and watching them fight all the time, the real reason that I have a life ministry, if you want to say, of connecting souls is because I was born three months early, Andy. Wow. And I spent the first three months alone in a preemie hospital. I was only two pounds, and I had to stay there. So uh, a psychic said to me recently that you made the decision to choose this as your life ministry because you didn't want other people to suffer the pain of this connection that you were feeling. So there's my calling. There you go. That's a beautiful calling to have, and you have impacted many people's lives around the world. I love your optimistic approach. Before we dive into the book, 
you say in the book that women are the watchdogs of relationships in our society. How did you come up come to that conclusion? Well, just watch. <laughs> watch <what comes> <laughs> <laughs> when I bring this to your attention, I've noticed this problem. <laughs> I mean, we're <laughs> this is what we do. We're the home. We're the heart. You know. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, <laughs> so you are an expert on this. I love this term called husband withdrawal. Okay, I'm not talking about a natural form of birth control here. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for the other loving and lasting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the technical name for this is the demand withdraw negative escalation cycle or husband withdrawal for short. This is the number one fight pattern in intimate relationships, the number one cause of breakups, divorce, and domestic yeah. violence. And my method shows how to break this cycle. You want me to like give you a scenario of what husband withdrawal is so that people understand it and it's not so theoretical? I'm just having you look up into your camera eyeball because I want to see your beautiful eyes. I know. More. I have this terrible. I have to look into your face. I want to connect you. <laughs> I, know. I know. I have to look in the camera, and then it's like I'm talking to a wall, which I literally have. <laughs> but I will try to be good. All right. So, do you want me to give you a little scenario so that you yes. understand? Yes. So, imagine this is addressed to the women who are listening, but the guys will understand completely when I lay the scenario out. All right. So, imagine you're in the throes of a heated argument with your mate when suddenly his eyes glaze over and he turns stone deaf. So since he's not listening to what's bugging you, you naturally turn up the volume, hoping to blast the wax from his ears. And since he's not listening, you just crank up the, the heat even more. And what happens? He becomes more deaf, more defensive, just plain out of there in the flash of a firefly. And millions of women throughout the world are so familiar with the way men distance themselves emotionally or physically in the face of relationship conflict. And this is the demand withdraw, negative escalation cycle, or husband withdrawal for short. And as I said, it's the number one cause of relationship and marital fighting, divorce, and domestic violence. So would you like me to talk more about what causes it? I mean, this is like, I'm so passionate about this because when people understand what it is, and what causes it? Oh my gosh, I had no idea. This is so simple and it's so easy to fix. It's like learning a language that all it's like having a decoder ring, okay? It's like all of a sudden yeah. you feel you you have an understanding of how you're communicating and it, it it, yes, there's gender stuff in it, of course, but it goes even beyond that. It brings a whole open-hearted way of creating a team aspect to the relationship. Right, right, because here's the thing. Men's bodies are hardwired to be hyper-reactive to stress and danger, okay? Mm -hmm. And modern danger is no longer the ferocious tiger. It's the pissed-off wife or girlfriend. When she comes out and baring her teeth and berating him with criticism, his body sees danger and involuntarily switches into autonomic nervous system arousal or ANS arousal, which triggers the fight-flight response. And since he doesn't want to physically fight her, he flees instead. That's what most guys do. And there are three ways that all men flee. And women need to understand this because this is a primitive, biological programming that dates back to prehistoric times. Men had to either flee or fight dangerous prey. It was adaptive, right? Yeah. So modern danger isn't the ferocious tiger. It's that pissed off wife or girlfriend. And his physiology sees danger. He sees a tiger and he, instead of fighting her, flees instead. Now there are three ways that all guys flee. The first way is the obvious way. They uh, leave the room, the house, they avoid contact, they hide out in the basement, they stay out. That's obvious. We know physical fleeing. But the more subtle ways that men flee are verbally. Here they verbally escape responsibility. They make excuses, they justify, they defend themselves. And then the, the third way that men flee is psychically. Here they're physically present, but they're mentally gone. They have a deaf, dumb, and blind expression, a no obloing glace expression. They're drooling on their ties. But it doesn't matter which of the three ways that a guy withdraws. A woman not knowing its primitive biological programming talking, she thinks, this guy doesn't give a crap about me. He doesn't care enough to stick around and resolve our conflicts. So what does she do? She turns up the heat. Right. But as I said, 
heated fighting is what triggers the biochemical imbalance. So she turns up the heat and unwittingly sets off more biological fire alarms, more fleeing, and more fighting. And this is how the downward spiral of conflict occurs in the majority of relationships. So, yeah, one of our commenters here, um, David Leopold, can you see that his comment? Selective listening. Oh, well, let me put that up on the screen. There you go. David, thank you. That's great. That's what my Very dad nice. used to call it. Call Very it. nice. In other words, but literally, believe it or not, the shutdown that happens, where I said that you just shut down, it's called um, cognitive shutdown. Believe it was adaptive when men were hunters, right? And they were confronted with a tiger. They couldn't be thinking. Uh, gee, maybe I shouldn't uh, kill this tiger. Maybe I'll die. Maybe I won't get laid again. You can't be thinking about this. You shut down. You don't see. You don't hear. You don't listen. You either flee or you fight. That's yeah. such a, that's such an important thing, you know, about our men. So, and having been, well, 28 years with the same guy, you know, I've been here with the woman. Like, why can't you hear what I'm saying? It's so obvious. If you just yeah. did this one thing, it would be perfect around here, right? Well, the first part of it is this is what the demand withdrawal. The more heated a woman comes, becomes, the more she sets off these biological fire alarms, sets off this imbalance, the fight flight response, and drives herself farther and farther away from resolution. But there is a solution. There is okay. a solution. And, my so my book is all about showing you how to break the cycle which is easily accomplished by cooling the climate down because remember I said a minute ago that it's heated fighting that triggers the biochemical imbalance well it turns out that cooling the climate actually stops husband withdrawal dead in its tracks then you actually have a man who wants to stick around and resolve conflicts with you which is easily achieved using the step-by-step -step method that I show you in the last chapter of the book. But first we got to cool it down so he's here and present. So uh, I have a series of relationship climate control techniques and there are several chapters and would you like me to talk about some of them? Oh, thank you Dr. Jamie. I would love it and don't worry gals, it's not just all about us getting our act together so we can communicate. It really is. There's lots that Jamie has to Dr. Jamie has to share with us today, and this these cool down tips are so impactful and powerful. Right, and I should say also that you know even though the the general pattern is that women are heated, that's the female gender role to be expressive, and women are pursuing and men are withdrawing. I see many couples where the roles are reversed, mm -hmm. where the man is doing the pursuing and the woman is doing the withdrawing. So it doesn't matter. My methods work all the same, even if the roles are reversed. Okay, and also yeah. if you're a gay couple, my methods work. If you're unmarried, if you're young, if you're old, doesn't matter. The methods work. So, uh, or if you're if you're a parent of teens, also works. My method will also help you resolve conflicts with friends, family, children, coworkers, anybody. Great. All right. So, so give so, us a few cool down steps. All right. So the first uh, relationship climate control technique is what I call to identify and eliminate your fight traps. This is something both partners need to do, not just women, both. Fight traps are those faulty, dysfunctional fighting tactics that we all use. And I break fight traps into two categories, open warfare and secret warfare. Now, open warfare are those outright slams that we all know, the name calling, the character assassinations, the put downs. We know when we're getting a bag of crap dumped on our head, the out right fight traps right but the more subtle fight traps or the secret warfare fight traps like the three scrooges nagging whining complaining um, or guilt tripping or recruiting allies so in my chapter uh, on this topic I show you all the fight traps and what you want to do is you want to identify and eliminate them all because they all heat the climate whether they're open or secret warfare they heat the climate cause more ANS arousal more husband withdrawal you can't break the fight cycle and I always say to people remember now while it may feel good to get your rocks off on your partner, on the rocks is where your relationship is going to end up if you don't ditch the fight traps because whatever you say and do boomerangs back on you. And you hurt the other person, it's going to come back at you in spades. Now, Dr. Jamie, I, I will admit that sometimes we have fallen into the trap of what we call ourselves the Bickersons. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> and what happens though? Because and you know, folks, if you you've been at a dinner party and you see a couple going at it 
with each other. It's like one put down after another, a one upmanship or you know, scorekeeping. You win and you lose. And and the thing though that I really noticed too and is that it almost looks like addictive behavior. Like they can't stop or they can't help right. themselves. Right. That's a very good point. And in the um in, in the chapter on fight traps, I have um a, a little self test. There's a lot of fun tests and this one's called Are You a Fighting Junkie? <laughs> and how to recognize it. Right? Right. Because the thing is, many people do get their rocks off on fighting with each other. And what you find out is very often that you are secretly sticking it to a parent that really got got you hurt and damaged you. So so many couples will will feel like, you know, I'm paying my parent back, but they don't even know they're doing it. And in the process, yeah, you may be getting your rocks off on your parents symbolically, but you're ruining your relationship. Absolutely. And and yeah, this can lead right into my next question, which is, what causes sexual desire loss? How do men or women lose their sexual desire for their partners? All right, so that chapter in this book I call the Battle of the Bulge. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what bulge I'm talking about. My, my husband didn't like it that so many people lost their lives in the war of the Battle of the Bulge. But, but the fact is, we lose our lives by having a Battle of the Bulge. Now, right. the thing is, there are differences in the male and between the male and the female sexuality. Guys very often will not lose their sex drive even when their relationship is in trouble. I mean, there's a biological appropriative imperative. They got what a 300 million sperm urging them to take the plunge and you know procreate and so on. But <laughs> women, for women, when they don't feel safe and secure in their relationship, the first thing that clicks off is the sex drive because mm -hmm. there's this feeling of if this relationship is not going to make it, the last thing I want is to have a baby with you. So even though we have birth control, you know, we can have sex without getting pregnant. Our primitive biological prog programming doesn't know anything about this. Our knees get sealed shut. Like you're not safe. Nah, -uh, not going there. I don't want to risk getting pregnant. So that that's my my answer to the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but sometimes, you know, the guys, they shut down, and what happens mm -hmm. is the gal sits there and says, what have I done wrong? And even though she's put on her wonderful lingerie and really tapped into her, her right. temptress, the guy's like, don't touch me, you make my skin crawl, which is the mm -hmm. worst feeling in the world it's for an a awful thing. But don't forget that one of the best ways, this is a fight trap, one of the best ways to stick it to a partner is to not stick it to your partner. Yeah. You know, passive aggression. Yeah. You want it, I'm not giving it. So sometimes you will withhold sex because you're mad. It's a sex war game. Sometimes it's because literally I'm so hurt that mm -hmm. I just lost my desire for you. But we can fix this. I mean, I had a couple come to me after having had no sex for 35 years, okay? And they were so polarized, neither one had desire for the other. But the thing is, as you put my method into place and you cool the climate down and you start to learn to listen to each other and understand each other, centuries of wax melt from your ears, all kinds of scar tissue that you've built up around your heart melts away and you reconnect. I love that, and one of the things you uh, tell folks about in your book are the essential nutrients a relationship uh -huh. needs, which you share with us, because they work so well. Right, because it's sort of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of poundings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the thing is, when you understand what each other needs to feel new fed, and nutritious in a relationship and you feed each other these what I call relationship essential nutrients you're heading off fights before they even start now in general women's relationship essential nutrients are a little different than what men need men tend to need admiration and appreciation and this connects to the male gender role because men are wired to protect and provide for their offspring and they then it's an instrumental or task oriented gender role. So when they do for you, then they feel that they want their efforts to be appreciated because men often love you through what they do for you. You know, I just fix the garbage disposal. You see, I love you. So, and they want to be admired and appreciated for it. Now, a lot of women will say, well, why should I appreciate him and admire him for doing something that's his job? But the fact is, 
all of us need to be admired and appreciated every day for doing what we're supposed to do. Think about how we learn to walk. We uh, see the baby try and we go, yay, yay, good job, and we motivate the person, the baby, to continue the behavior. Same with grown-ups. We yeah. need our pats on the back. So you admire and appreciate a guy. Pat him on the back for what he's doing that feeds you in the right way, and you are going to be feeding yourself because he'll want to do more of the same since he's getting his admiration and appreciation from you. Right. And, and women need, for women, this, the essential nutrients are the two S's. Guys are the two A's, and women are the two S's. And for women, it's safety and security. We need to feel it. And it's interesting because, you know, people will say, oh, that's really sexist. You are really screwed up, Dr. Love. And I'm like, Listen, I didn't, I'm just reporting the news. And all I can say <laughs> to you is that all the research shows that even very successful and wealthy women are always marrying men who make more than they do. So it's like our biology is screaming, I want to feel safe, I want to feel secure, I want to feel protected. So if a guy gives his partner that feeling of, you are first in my mind and my heart, and it's a feeling, and one of the best ways he gives it is, I'm interested in you, what's important to me is important to you, what's important to you is important to me, and I'm listening to you with the ears of my heart, I know you're here for the long haul, you care about me, I'm safe and secure, and baby, my drive's going to go up. It absolutely is. And gals, don't think you're going to have to be like another mother by appreciating your darling man. It really is an honoring and cherishing thing to do. You know, how many gals does your guy go like this? What do you think, honey? You know, when they come back from the gym, wow, those muscles are just so beautiful, honey. Yay. Babe, or, you know, and, and, and I've gone down that, <clears throat> that road too, Dr. Jamie, where it's like, what? You did the dishes. Big deal. But when I shifted into... Thank you. It just helps me so much when you do that. I so appreciate it. Why wouldn't Boom. you appreciate someone for for everything that he or she does? It's it's a lovely way to be. Yeah. You know, my my uh, youngest teenager boy asked me the other day, Mom, why do I have to put the seat down? Because I don't like dropping my buns in the <laughs> toilet bowl. That's why. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, I I felt the need to talk to him about manhood and that. Just like men open our doors for us, pull out the chairs, and carry, lift heavy things. At least that's the rules of my home. <laughs> um, I said it's the same thing. You're showing that you honor and respect a woman by putting that seat down and, so that she doesn't fall into the toilet bowl. And it made perfect sense to him. So there you go. And so basically our little mantra for him is, man up, put the seat down. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I guess the same can work in household chores because that is the biggest complaint I'm always hearing that and, you know, watching too many sports shows from women is that, you know, the men are not, it doesn't feel like they are doing their equal load with yeah. household chores. That's a big, big argument. But, you know, so often what happens is we fall into the trap of, either open fight traps uh, you know the the or the secret warfare fight traps and we rag on guys and of course then they want to do less not more you know right and that and that just doesn't work you have a technique called between the sheets techniques it's reading between the sheets oh, right reading between the sheets reading between the sheets yeah the reading between the sheets all right so all right, so this is how you uncover the real, real meaning of your sex battles. Because very often, the sex battles that we're in conceal other deeper issues. Like, for example, I in the book, I tell the story of a guy who suddenly lost his desire for his wife after they had a child. So, you know, on the surface you would think, oh, well, she was, didn't want sex anymore or she let herself go. It was none of these overt things. So I had to use my reading between the sheets technique to uncover the real meat of the matter, <laughs> <laughs> which was not sexual at all. And very often our sexual fights are actually based in non-sexual issues because it's often sex said that sex fights aren't about sex and money fights really aren't about money. It's more about love and other things. So if you're not giving me enough sex, it's really symbolic for I don't feel loved or I'm not giving it to you because I don't feel loved by you. And we symbolically, you know, beat each other over the head using our private parts as the clubs. <laughs> that was a mixed metaphor, I know. But <laughs> so in the reading between the sheets, but with this guy, what I did was I just 
she took him through the process, which I, you know you can fully do, but because I show you step by step how to do it in the Battle of the Bulb chapter. And what we found out was that he lost his sex drive with his wife on one particular day when he looked at her pregnant and his unconscious associated her back to his own mom and he remembered seeing his mom and being turned on by her and that when he saw his wife pregnant like mom his brain said oh you can't screw your mom and that just did him in so once we uh, read between the sheets got down to the meat of the matter and it made him realize that it's okay you can be turned on by a cow it doesn't matter as long as you don't act on it it's normal to be attracted to your mother too he was freed up and then they the plumbing worked fine. Everything got back to quote normal. Yeah. Normal fun. You know, you have a I think my favorite section really for healing is the old scars mm. section of your book. So mm. powerful because we're all, you know, as much healing as we try to do you know, on a daily basis, we still have things that trigger experiences we had earlier. And I think you have some great advice for folks in the book to manage that as an observer and for themselves. Okay, so we're talking about, you know what I was saying, what heats the climate and how we have to cool the climate down. Now we all bring into our relationships old scars from childhood and boy do they heat the climate. So let me explain how this happens. I call it the emotional lake effect. So if you think about the actual lake effect where a storm gathers moisture uh, as it passes across the Great Lakes, it dips into, you know, the Great Lakes, picking up moisture and steam and adding fuel to a storm. Well, our unconscious, are, our unconscious minds are exactly the same way. We are constantly comparing present day offenses with the wounds we suffered as kids. Okay, mm -hmm. And when we do this, we are unconsciously dipping into the reservoir of our unconscious, dredging up all the pain from childhood, and without knowing it now, this heats the climate up, and we're dumping this entire bag of emotional poop on our partners. And obviously, this heats the climate. So let me give you an example of how the emotional lake effect uh, affects a couple. Mm -hmm or you know an intimate relationship so a husband and wife are out to dinner at a restaurant right the husband keeps checking his wristwatch like this finally the wife says if you can't wait to get out of here and you want to get rid of me well then go to hell and get the check and he's like huh huh I'm just checking my wristwatch to make sure to feed the meter on time and now you're handing me a fine what is this well her emotional lake effect was that she associated him with the watch to her father who never had any time for her he wanted to be rid of her couldn't get a you know wait to be away from her so without knowing it her emotional lake effect churned up all these feelings emotional fireworks are going off inside her she doesn't know why so it causes emotional intensification and the old scar also causes us to not be able to let go of or shake what's bugging us this is because we're making the associations unconsciously so we don't know I'm actually remembering my uh, father or my mother who didn't have time for me and in fact what's diabolical is the overt thing we're fighting about acts like a smoke screen and now we get caught up in arguing about the garbage or the laundry or the you know the the dirty dishes and we get caught up in the overt content and we don't realize oh wow there's really an old scar afoot so would you believe that stripping is the solution to this problem Tell and us I'm, not more. Talking about, I'm not talking about getting naked I'm talking about, here's another technique in my chapter on old scars where I show you how to strip away the overt content that you're fighting about to get to the old scar that lingers, that's lurking beneath and that's fueling your old scar. And I go through every old scar and how it manifests in your intimate relationship. And here's the beautiful thing. Once you understand what old scar has been activated, you are now in a position to completely transform your relationship. Stop the heat, stop the fighting, because what happens is now you can turn your partner into a healing ally instead of an enemy. Because you can say, guess what? This reminded me of when my dad said X, Y, and Z, and how he hurt me. Now your partner has empathy for you. You're not turning your cannons on your partner. You're now together, shoulder to shoulder, and you are now fulfilling the most divine purpose of our intimate relationships which is to help each other heal the old scars from childhood and as we heal the climate cools down and fighting stops it's magical oh, I have goosebumps what Dr. Jamie is really sharing here is that relationships are a team sport 
And just like in a, if you were on a basketball team or something, you're helping each other get better, get the ball down the court. You're working together as a team. So sometimes you may have identified your own scars, and maybe you've, you've hopefully shared them with your partner, so that if sometimes it gets triggered and you can't recognize and see the forest from the trees, your partner can go, oh, "Honey, that was when you did," and you're like, "Oh, yes, that's right," and it calms everything down. Which leads me into how you say, forget the golden rule, use the platinum rule. The platinum rule. And we're not talking about jewelry here, although <laughs> your relationship will shimmer. The golden rule. Most couples get into trouble because they live according to the golden rule. I'll do unto you as I want you to do unto me. So let's say when I'm sick, I love to be pampered and you give me all kinds of goodies and everything else. So when you're sick, I do the same to you. Meanwhile, you want to be left in peace. So the platinum rule is what should govern our relationships, which is I do unto you as you want to be done unto, and you do unto me as I want to be done unto. We don't have to be twins separated and cl twins you know, cloned together. Treat each other separate and give each other what the other needs, and it doesn't have to be the same, and often it isn't. And this goes with the bedroom too, everybody. Use yeah. your words and let your partner know how you need to be touched and held and loved. Right, Dr. Jamie? You got it, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about listening. That's key. What did you say? No, that oh. was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> I fell for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was perfect. Uh, but you know, before we talk about listening, I just was thinking about, can you just go over one more time, because we talked a lot about husband withdrawal, but what are some wonderful key words that a man can say to his darling? I know you talked about how to make her feel safe and secure, but what are, are some other key words that he can say to keep her feeling wonderful about the relationship? You know, a, a woman... For a woman to feel happy in a relationship, she needs to feel that she is number one in her partner's mind and heart. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that the man or, you know, if you're gay, that your partner has to be with you 24-7. It's a feeling. The best example I have of this is my husband used to uh, drive across the uh, Kingston Rhinecliff Bridge on the way to work and back, obviously. And he would sometimes call me and say, I'm seeing the sunset and it's not the same without you. I wish you were here. So just saying that was, I have the right feeling for you. You're always in my mind and heart. And what men don't understand is you could go to the moon. Just let us know you're thinking of us. We're first in your mind and heart. Don't come back. It's fine. No, I'm not. <laughs> Feeling, feeling. You know, here's another example. This is such a true example of this. And this is so helpful for men because they don't really understand. Because again, men's gender role is all about doing. If I don't do it, what good is it? But for women, the emotional feeding is words very often. So a husband and wife are in a jewelry store, right? And the wife sees a beautiful ring and she sees you know, sees the price tag and the husband looks at it and he says, what are you nuts? You think I'm made of money? I can't afford that freaking ring. She's crushed, right? Now, if he had just said, oh, honey, that is the most beautiful ring. It would look so beautiful on your finger. That's the ring I'm going to buy for you when you have, when we have the money. For a woman, that's as good as the ring. Guys look at me and they say, what? Are you bullshitting me? Or what? <laughs> No, it's a fact. So give her the right feeling. Let her know she's First, in your mind and heart, that's what we do. That's thank you for thank you for diving deeper into that, Dr. Jane, because thank I just want to make sure that the gals are, yeah, you know, the guys are hearing how they can win. <laughs> thank you so much for asking. Oh, uh, and so we'll go back to listening now because that is that is a key that is okay, a key so, factor. So on the road to conflict resolution, listening is the super highway. Now, conflicted couples are very poor at listening. And don't feel bad because it's not like we learned how to do any of these relationship skills in school. Where did we learn? We learned by copying our parents, and most of our parents had dysfunctional relationships. So listening is not something we know how to do. And in distressed relationships, because you're chronically feeling unheard, everybody is vying to speak and talk over the other and the more you do the less heard you feel and it creates a vicious cycle so I have a, a whole chapter where I show you all my listening skills and how to use them and believe it or not when you feel truly heard you, this is love in action mm -hmm. you're listening with the ears of your heart and do you know that 
the majority of our conflicts are resolved by truly feeling heard and understood. Now, if listening and feeling heard and understood isn't sufficient, don't worry. I show you how to fully negotiate a resolution if listening isn't enough. But you'll be surprised at how often just really listening well will do the job. It cools the climate, we feel heard, and we're okay. Everyone, join uh, Neil Wood here. I'm just going to pull this up, Dr. Jamie. <laughs> He's ordering your book right now. I encourage everyone to order Dr. Jamie's book. Here's why. It's so much fun to read. She's so funny. It also is actionable. You can put it to work immediately. You can put the first chapter to work immediately and see results. This information, her, her tasks, her ways of dissolving and you know the climate control and the cooling down they absolutely work and she go, really goes into the scientific side as to why you do these things because of our cavemen and cave women behavior how we can sabotage ourselves and really you don't deserve or need to be in pain and as you all know every day I'm about lowering that divorce rate and you can fix this and your relationship do not throw it out with the bath water, so to speak, really take time. No, this is one book. book. We're going to throw the baby out with the bath water. We're going <laughs> to heal all of our old baby scars. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh yeah. yeah. But um, so yeah, definitely go get this book. In the meantime, Dr. Jamie has another book coming out. I want her to share it with you because it's mm -hmm. so so beautiful. Share. It's it's being published by Hay House as well, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's love never dies. How to reconnect and make peace with this, the deceased is a subtitle. So uh, the thing is, a lot of people don't know this because I haven't publicly shared it yet, but I was madly in love with my husband for 27 years and he died of a bee sting oh, while we were vac on vacation in Italy. Now, uh, I it never occurred to me that there's an afterlife. Like I said, my parents, I was raised by two Jewish atheists. The only religion they taught me was religiously hating each other. They taught me to not believe in God or the afterlife. The minute my husband left his body, it was obvious to me he was still here with me. And he made his presence known in the most extraordinary ways, which I tell in the story, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt, relationships don't end in death love never dies he's here so this experience with him has literally transformed my thinking about two things number one how do we handle grief therapy mm -hmm. the western approach to grief therapy is grieve let go and move on and what I've discovered is that method leaves the bereaved at an even greater loss so my experiences with my husband realizing that they're still here with us has led me to create a new form of grief therapy where I show people how to reconnect, say hello, and I'm now bringing my conflict resolution method to the world of after-death communication and showing you if you need to make peace with somebody who is deceased, you can do it. They're right here. They have an eternity to work this out with you. And it is untrue what we've been told that you have to wait to die to be reunited in heaven. Heaven is now. It's all around us. We can reconnect now and make peace and heal our relationships, even wow. with the deceased. So that's my next book. When does it do out? It's coming out in September. How oh. fitting. That's the month that he... Uh, he oh wow! I don't say died. I say he left his body because that's all he did. He left right. his body. Yeah. That's so wonderful. How do folks work with you, Dr. Jamie? How can they find you? Work with you? Do you do work with individuals, couples? How does that go? Oh yes, come to my website. That's the easiest way to find me. Ask Dr. Love. A S K D R. No periods, no spaces. AskDrLove.com or DrLove.com. You know, being the first relationship advice site on the web. I got all the URLs. So. <laughs> yeah. Plus you're you're very busy also on Facebook. You have a great following there and on Twitter. You're yeah. on social media and I, I know we're going to see more of you over here on Google Plus because I mean how wonderful is Dr. Love, Dr. Jamie. I mean she's perfect for our favorite platform Google Plus Hangouts. I have to admit I lost my Google Plus virginity today with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wonderful. And you also, but you do have an active YouTube channel where people can go and listen to you, but you also have a phenomenal radio show. Tell everybody about that. 
So uh, that's also called Ask Dr. Love, my main brand. And uh, you, it's easy to listen to through my main website. You can go there and listen to it live. And the shows uh, are also archived mm -hmm. so that you can hear them on iTunes and um, where, you know everywhere on the web. But I'm actually now going to be moving from uh, TalkZone to webtalk.net, and they're going to begin syndicating my show as well. Oh. So. And and you get the best questions. Seriously, call Dr. Love. I mean, she will answer any question. Baby, I'm a slut. <laughs> and, she, and she takes her time with it. It's so wonderful. Yes. So if you have a burning question and you're embarrassed to ask your doctor or your friend, this goddess right here, Dr. Love, will help you out. Seriously, it's so I leave wonderful. I no sexual stone unturned, right? Yeah. It's, you know, it's all part of the glue. You know, pleasure is the glue that will hold your relationship together yes. along with kissing your fights goodbye. Absolutely. Right. Because the thing is people need to realize it doesn't matter how much you love each other and how much passion you have. If you do not learn how to resolve the inevitable conflicts and the angry feelings that go with it, your relationship is not going to make old bones no matter how much you love each other no matter how attracted you are. Because anger is the number one killer of love. Unresolved anger that is. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's so easy to have in a relationship. You know, one of the folks I love and adore, Molly Apple, she's the author with her partner Joe of The Soulmate Experience. She took the toothpaste cap off the toothpaste and turned it into, instead of being angry about it, as an opportunity to remind herself how much she loves her darling man and how unique he is. So everything would be about perception, right, Dr. Jamie? Exactly. We can turn the toothpaste cap into a cervical cap. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. All good. Uh, hey everyone, I know we had a lot of listeners here. I thank all of you, or viewers I should say, for tuning in today. What a wonderful show. So much great information. Imagine being able to bring harmony to your relationship so quickly, so easily with Dr. Jamie's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. I hope you can grab a copy, download a copy right away and start bringing more harmony to your relationship. Thank you so much Dr. Jamie for joining me today. Any last words for viewers? Kiss your fights goodbye. <laughs> You're going to get laid more. <laughs> You're going to love and last. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, next week, speaking of loving and lasting, I Delilah Taylor is joining me and she is the monogamous temptress and oh does she have fun and sexy things to say. I'm wishing everyone a week filled with joy, love and laughter and remember keep tuning in and deepening your love, deepening your intimacy and deepening your erotic connection with your beloved self and your beloved partner. Thank you so much for joining us today. A big mwah, mwah to everybody out there. Thank you and see you next week.